Okay, let's talk about how to label an unlabeled phase diagram. To do so, the, there's a couple rules we need to remember. First off, at the top of the diagram, we're going to have a liquid, right? That's at our high temperatures. That's where things are going to be molten, right? So we can go ahead and clearly this top region, we can label that as liquid. Or at least we can guess that it's liquid for now, and we'll be able to confirm that in a moment. The second rule we want to follow is that as we go at a, at a single temperature, so if you were to draw a flat line temperature across this, we have to alternate between single and two phase regions. So it'll go single phase, two phase, single phase, two phase, as we travel from left to right and right to left. So for example, in the liquid we have a single phase region. So if this is a, a single phase region at this temperature going all the way across, right, then we know that this region right here must be a two phase region. If we continued, we see this vertical line, and that might be a line compound. It's not totally clear yet. Um, we could guess that it's a line compound for a minute, single phase, right? which would make this a two phase, which would make this a single phase region. And that makes sense. This compound over here, pure palladium, is going to be single phase, and then it has a region of solid solubility over here where it has up to, looks like over 20% of the atoms can be replaced with magnesium before it reaches that second phase region. Um, we can go ahead and continue this. If this is a single phase region, this is a two phase region. That makes this a two phase region. This is clearly the solidest and liquidest line, so we know that this is a liquid plus solid region. This is clearly a eutectic point where you go from a single liquid to two different solids. So let's actually start labeling things. Let's call this alpha plus beta here. So we've got our liquid goes to alpha plus beta. That's our eutectic reaction. Let's call this phase over here alpha, which makes this line compound beta, right? Which makes this region right here beta plus liquid. And we can keep on going. Let's call this, we're going to assume it's a line compound and call it gamma. We've got gamma plus liquid right here. And then in the region to the right, we now have gamma plus beta, right? Because this line compound extends all the way down. So we know that right here, we're going to have beta plus this compound, which is going to be a line compound as well. We'll call it epsilon, which makes this epsilon plus this line compound. We can call it, say, phi epsilon plus phi. It's, uh, this is gamma, so that's going to be gamma plus what we called epsilon. This will be gamma plus we need a new one. Let's call it eta. So this is going to be eta there, which makes this eta plus we need a new line compound. Let's call this one, oh, we're running out of letters here. Let's call it um, new. New plus eta. We've got eta plus over here. That pure component's gonna be line compound as well. We can call it um, omega, I guess. Typically they use Greek letters for these things, um, or they'll just say what the compound is. They can write the chemical formula of these things. Um, that would also be something that we could do in this diagram. Uh, let's keep filling it out. This is gonna be liquid plus eta. This will be liquid plus new. Uh, we need a new. So sometimes when you see this flat line like that, that means that it goes through a phase transformation. And you can actually name this thing a new down here, but you could call this one new prime. That sometimes is what they'll call it. So this would be omega plus new prime. You might even call that omega prime where, or this temperature range. It's a slightly different form. Oftentimes when they use the prime, it means that it's close to the same crystal structure above and below that point. It's just a slight shift. For example, if there's octahedra, then they get tilted or something. Um, that's typically what the, the little prime, the apostrophe mark denotes, is just a small change, not a big change. Um, and then here, our last one would be nu plus, well, nu prime plus eta. It's a little bit messy, but that's how you label these things. As you go left to right, it goes single phase, two phase, single phase, two phase, and it makes it pretty easy to label these things. If your one two one two rule ever doesn't work, that means that you misdiagnosed a line compound. You either called one a line compound that wasn't, or you forgot to label one. Um, now, what interesting reactions are there on this phase diagram? We could label those as well. Clearly, we have our eutectic point over here. We have this region of maximum solid solubility, just over 20%, almost like 22 or 
right there, all that solub solubility. We have paratectic reactions right here and right here. What else do we have? We have two solids going to one solid. What do we call that? So that would be a solid plus solid. That would be a paratectoid reaction happening right here. There's a paratectoid. Um, we have, what else do we have? We have another eutectic right there. This is probably actually eutectic. If we were able to zoom in on that, I would probably eutectic point right there. Um, another paratectic. Sorry, I think I said eutectic right there. Um, another, what would this one be? So two solids going to one solid, that would be another paratectoid right there. And that's our phase diagram. We have a congruent melting point up here. Technically, the single phases are also congruent, but that's the congruent melting point that we'd label. And that's this phase diagram labeling.